Okay, I'm here with the WIC VZR model on, and yes, quick, you, you told me some, some, some very interesting stuff. Let me go back to, to, to I started working on the 3D audio aspects of the, uh, of this, uh, the 3D audio back at Apple in 2007, and it, it seems like they took, took the, the lead on that, and they now have some product that's doing spatial audio. Our interest in this was to improve headphone performance. Why don't we get a little bit more... Uh, Why are, we, why are we not getting the out of the headphone experience? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of audiophiles seem to think that they're getting, they get these expensive headphones. And what gets improved is the drivers get improved, a little smoother response, a little bit more top end, a little bit more inner detail in the music. But still, for me, the sound is it's all inside the head, head which is one of the biggest problems, I, I think, with yeah. headphones. And so, from a recording studio's point of view, they have two speakers out in front of them at 60 degrees ITU standard in their near field. That's a perspective they mix it. I don't get that perspective when I'm listening to music. I, mean, exactly. I don't hear anything in front of me like they do. I do with these, especially when it's properly engineered. Yeah. So what I did is when I set off to do this, how do I get better out of headphone experience? And I started to study how the driver interactive with the ear. So your ear shape, all these little nooks and crannies that everyone has, and it's a little bit different on everyone, but they have gain structure to them. They amplify certain frequencies, and they also the sound arriving from over there, coming to my head over here, that all gets filtered and arrives at my ear a little bit. My ear canal is here, 25 millimeters up, it's, it, you know, it travels. Time it takes from going from the right ear to the left ear around my head is 800 microseconds, give or take. And the distance between here and here is, you know, 10, 20 microseconds from the top of my ear down. We can, our brain can slice those little bits of time, and that's why uh, we can hear localization. And we, our brain, our sound is, our hearing is the fastest sense that we have. It's faster than any other sense. Uh, it's eight times faster than any other sense. Our sight is probably the slowest, but touch and, and smell and all those are the slowest. So uh, we, we have this really fantastic brain, and if we can help it sounds arrive at our ear more accurately, um, then we can we fool our brain into thinking that we're really listening in a real space. Right. So one of the things that we developed is and patented with international patents that we're working on as well is what we call crosswave. And this is a rig this is a 40 millimeter driver underneath, custom design. But what we do is this would be the front of the ear and this is the back of the ear lobe. And there's about ten different things happening at the driver level. As the driver is going up against this plate, there's a compression of the sound against it. So it's working as, as an impedance. It stabilizes the driver because the driver's a wide range driver. It's covering bass frequencies all the way to the upper end of our hearing range. And that driver is doing undulating like this chaotically. We don't see that because it's obviously a microscopic level. So what this does is this impedance on this helps stabilize it as a resistance to the driver and also positions this to work with our gear also um, directed towards gain locations of different frequencies. So that helps smooth out that road we were talking about. Right. Uh, so it's really the last 13 millimeters from the driver to your ear that's been broken. So that's what I tried to solve. And then further to that, the cable design, let me show you the cable yep. design over here. Yep. Like a visual hologram, we've all had the experience where we could see it straight on, but if you move to the side of the, of the hologram, all of a sudden the illusion falls away. Mm. Well, you had the same thing with, in an auditory sense, in that it's a very fragile signal. We only have, we only have two, to get 3D audio, we only have two wires, so it's really, 3D is super stereo, there's this, what we consider stereo. Uh, stereo two channel audio, but it's still the same two wires. So, what's critical here 
and high-end audio guys know because they make a lot of expensive cables and all this, but you put the science to it. Uh, we custom designed this cable. We did network analysis. We did, you know, we looked at the the, the way the distribution of, of uh, all the electrical characteristics. We studied that, and we're actually coming out with another cable that improves upon that because making cables is hard. It's you know, the process of drawing copper wires and putting insulation on. All those things affect the performance. But you're talking lots of octaves of signal coming through that wire and they have to arrive it starts at the end of the wire and gets come at the end of the wire accurate right. in to create the illusion and come together because your brain's got to put it together right so that that's what we focus on is trying to build accuracy so oh, is that something level. to do with the phase core, core, I mean core, uh, accurate well, phase yes we have to we, so everything has to arrive at the proper phase at the end right and nothing's perfect it's an analog world but we, that's what we strive to do and what we end up with is better sound, more realistic sound, more spatial sound. Most, honestly, most headphones, <laughs> guys talk, start talking about how great the sound staging is and all this. And if you were to look at a top-down view above your head, it's basically a, 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 an ellipse or an oval uh, instead of being a spherical 360 right. spatial. It's not accurate. So. Why that's important is, is if you hear a sound in gaming, they, they, they position and engineer the sound of a gun firing being over, over here somewhere. And if it's not accurate, then it's closer to your ear. Yes, you hear it, it's over here, but it's not, it doesn't give you the sense of space right. that it's being fired. They do, you know, when they do gaming, they actually take sound assets by recording guns and tanks, and they do take the real sound. And then they engineer them and put them in space, proper distance cues and proper panning. And there's Hi there, how are you? We're trying to retrieve we that and reverse. Right, very interesting. So, so you mentioned that we can channel balance, get the channel balance correct, uh, good, and phase correction, fa accurate phase. I don't know of any gaming headsets that go to this event. The, the, the drivers are custom designed. Everything, everything about it. We, the manufacturer. Okay. Uh, awesome. So, so you put them in bins. We can't match them. Then our assembly house takes to make multiple bins of that. So it starts out here wide like normal. We truncate them and match them so we have. And then we truncate them down so these are very well matched. Higher than the stuff that's in here. And it makes a difference. It's important to 3D audio. You can't have a product balance. It's exactly. not going to sound right. right. And the same thing with frequency response. All that. It's got to be matched. Yeah. Last question, Week. Any plans? So this is uh, uh, close back, understandably, because uh, it's uh, 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 especially gaming. But any plans for uh, open back version of it? That's, actually, it's not that hard to do. The thing about open back is my opinion. Uh, people don't understand. When you, if, if you've ever played around with speakers at all, you've taken the speaker out of the box, you notice that the bass gets canceled because it goes out of phase and cancels out the, the back wave that reaches the front. You don't hear the bass. Right, right. That's kind of what happens. Yeah. The only reason it works is the driver's so close to your ear, and there is a little bit of baffling due to the. But if it's a true open back, some of the bass is being canceled out. As a matter of fact, you look at a lot of open back headphones, the bass is. So you got this phasiness in the base of the lower frequency. Right, right. And okay. to me, when you go out of phase, acoustically, it all of a sudden sounds wider and not in an accurate way. Just ah, in my opinion. Got it. Yes. Okay? Yeah. I know. I get the. So, I so wide sound stage, stage doesn't really mean accurate three D. It just sounds spatial. It just, it's just if you ever put speakers out of phase, it does push them out. And you go, oh wow. Yeah. But the problem I have with from a gaming. Um, if it's open back, no sound even playing. You've already got a big uh, noise floor, right? It's got an instant noise floor without even any music. Playing. I get the, I get the, uh, so the problem with making closed backs. I understand why they went to open back. It's hard to control the rear wave and, and, and the resonance. A 
I think we did a pretty good job here for bowling. In fact, our, our, the, many people tell us yeah, that they is sound like bowling. Yeah, this is bowling. Yeah. 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 Without all the noise. Right. No, I, I agree. I mean, uh, that sounded fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Rick, for your... Uh, for your thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Dasson is listening to uh, VZR Model 1 to some pretty interesting 3D uh, material on YouTube. Here it is, real space 3D. What do you think, boy?